Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my YouTube channel. And here I'm Tarun Sharma and we were talking about Nest.js Advanced Series 2023. And we have almost covered these two modules and we were approaching to finish the module second. So what we were talking, we were just talking about type ORM, how to manage the relationship. We also talked about type ORM migration with the 3.x. And then we also talked about how to write the different entities with the relationships. Now I will be covering a couple of more videos which are focusing more on Nest.js type ORM because now we have type ORM 3.x. So there are multiple options or multiple ways to create a type ORM connection for your application and then type ORM transactions, the new way of doing a transactions and how you can store the data using JSONB and how you can query and then all those things, how you can do the joins using type ORM, how you can just write a simple query builder. Uh, I mean, just you can just uh, create a query builder instance and just write a simple queries. And how can you do simple pagination with the type ORM? So these are some of the concepts we are going to cover with a simple application. We are going to use the same baseline code which we have already created in the Nest.js type ORM APIs. So I just created a fork of this or clone of this and created a fourth application, 04. And here we will be just talking about some entities and we will talk about how we are doing, doing all those things with the type ORM 3.x. So let's get started. What we will do is uh, first we will just do a quick recap. Here we were able to do migrate into uh, ORM uh, type ORM 3.x and this is how we were doing. In ORM config we, we did the, we are creating data source now. That is the major uh, difference from OR type ORM 2.x to 3.x. This is how you are writing your ORM config.ts and then when you want to, to uh, access the database instance it's still the same because we are using the same database module here in our application if you see app module i'm using domain module and this domain module still using uh, the same db module dot for root so i mean still you are just passing the entities all the type rm entities and this for root i have we we already have defined inside this package app database package and this is my database module because people are often getting confused and they are still struggling to set uh, set up a Nest.js with the type ORM because with the type ORM 3.x lots of things will change and if you don't get the dependency right you will be just getting the random errors so still you can use the same thing type ORM module dot for root async and you still you need to just return an object which contains all those configurations like database URL entities synchronized logging these are the options which you are getting from the type ORM module and coming to the dependencies like uh, what all version we are using for this particular version here we are using type ORM Nest.js type ORM 9.0 and type ORM 0.3 that's a major change and this also enables us to write a migrations and all those things the migration script also has been changed if you don't want to struggle just follow up this particular one so this is how you will write type or migration generate, migration show, migration run, migration create. And I mean, this code is already on GitHub. So you can just copy it and start using it. We need to pass the ORM config, which contains the data source object. If you are not passing the ORM config, then you will get an error that data source is not specified. And before running this, you already have a Docker running. I think my Docker is already running, which is Postgres container that is giving me my database okay so let's say if i try to play with this particular code cd apps so we can start with this 04 and i can just run simple commands i mean this is just a copy of this project and i can just do npm run uh migration generate let's say i wanted to just generate a migration file and here I can pass test like which migration file name you wanted to generate. So what it is looking at, it is looking at uh, your database connections like uh, in the ORM config.ts you have specified your database URL and all. If they, those are not correct, it won't generate the migration file and it is just creating these migrations in the root because the thing is inside ORM config now you are passing entities 
so entities it is taking these entities and the migration is inside src migration so we don't have that folder i think let me just see will it create here i think it was not creating inside the migrations folder here we have specified specifying the migrations directory so it is creating the migrations inside the root folder i mean you can just copy and paste it inside the appropriate directory and when you want to run the migrations where it is looking at for the migrations uh, let's also see this let's say if i just delete all these uh, migration files let's keep this one so if you see it is creating the migrations file based on whatever the entities you see so this is also a really nice change which i see earlier when i when i was creating these migrations files what those migration files were containing just up and down syntax so like let's say food order so what it is doing it is looking at the entities and it is checking okay what all entities do you have and inside apps it is creating inside 04 and this food order right so if you look into this table what uh, all migration syntax it contains it is looking at your entities so migration interface also has changed uh, with the type rm3 to 3.x and i have already mm -hmm. checked uh, okay uh, we are just using this database synchronization true it is checking your entities and it is creating this is the migration generate command so it is just generating these migration files and when you do migration run what will happen is you already have the entities from those entities we have generated these migration files and it will apply those migrations and create a tables so here if we see src migrations so here in the orm config we will check the migrations directory is source migrations so what i will do i try to just copy this inside of migrations and now if i run migrations run what will happen is it will look into this folder now the only slight problem which i see is when i'm just doing a migration generate command it should generate the migrations into the migrations folder so maybe i'm missing something here inside this uh, data source object so here like data source object contains all the properties what all things you need and here because I have specified the migrations directory, but it's not creating uh, the migrations there. I am just manually copying it there. But when I do migration run, obviously, it will check that directory and this particular directory and it is running the, the migrations. That is fine. So that is working as expected, whatever we needed. Okay, this is the migration table name and all the migrations has been created here. Now, let's say if I just try to do migration generate, code order v2, what it will do? So here I'm just trying to create uh, migrations, no change in the database schema were found. So this is important and they actually changed lots of things because I remember I used to do type or migrations in totally different order or different manner. What it is doing right now, I'm trying to generate a new migration, but there is no change in the database. How can I make some change? You can go to some of the entities and try to, let's say, if I'm just saying city, let's say address so i'm just adding a let's say new column and if i try to generate this thing what will happen is it should try to diff you can see it has generated this migration file and what this migration file contains so let's see the code here it has generated this now you can see the migration file is simple it has added an address which is character varying no not null and if I wanted to run this and apply to the database, what I will do, I will just copy and paste it here. And then I will apply the, the migrations, migration run, which will apply this migration to the database and our task is done. So maybe we should be able to do it in the far better way. So if you see the real production application, what, how it really happens. I mean, you obviously, you won't be just generating all the schema from the entities. You can do it. I mean, when I'm just trying to do npm run 
when I start the application and if I have this uh, synchronized true here inside a packages app database source here if I see the synchronized true here what it will do synchronize will check uh, your entities and your database if there is a difference then it will apply automatically synchronize the changes of your entities into the database so for now I will keep it false and you can start your application but when you are making it true whatever the changes you are doing in the entities will get applied to the database so I make it a false and whenever I'm changing a change in the entity let's say I'm just creating a new relationship or so whatever you can always generate a new migrations directly so here let's say country state address I will just put another thing is description now earlier I remember it used to generate an empty migration file now the there is a smart thing has been involved that it is looking into your migrations it is looking into your entities and trying to identify what has been changed in the entities with respect to the existing database tables and I got it okay there is some new column I have added I will copy this into the migrations and then I will just apply this migration change using migration run so I think this is really nice because with the help of this I don't need to write any migration manually because there is always a case where you can just end up writing a wrong SQL query in the migration because here I don't need to research okay what query I need to write alter, ta alter table restaurant address add description column with the character where okay, 22255 not none right so all these things like if I inside entities if I'm setting it uh, nullable true default null this is a change right and uh, there is another column address I will just mark that default is null and I think there is a nullable true I'm fine if it is an if it is null right v4 you keep increasing the versions and how it will how it will uh, execute in the production what you need to do is you just need to change your code and apply those migrations manually and locally but you at the end what you are getting you are getting these migrations generated automatically so in the pipeline you can just uh, run these migrations and apply the changes in the production so I need to copy this newly generated migration file here what it contains is it contains the alter statement where I'm just making uh, I'm just dropping the not null constraint right I will run the migration and it has applied those changes on the database so I think this approach is really nice because how I how I visualize it uh, while doing it on the production let's say I'm building a microservice I will write these entities and first I need to test everything is working you can you just make the synchronized false you generate the migrations and apply the migration okay you got the database copy your entities are there and you got the migration initial migration file SQL file even in the Prisma also it happens in the same way it generates a single migration file which contains all your SQL statement for the entities but after that whatever the change you are doing in the entities only those changes after that whatever the changes you are doing in the database entities only those changes will be reflected in the migrations so you can see this nice and clean initially it was big because I did create a three tables after that I did small change I created a version 2 or version 3 version 4 so when you want to run this in the CI pipeline you can just run npm run migration run so before deploying your changes you can just run the migrations it will apply the changes on your database and your code will be deployed so this is the really one of the nice feature which I like with the typo rm 3.x it is automatically creating the migrations earlier I used to like uh, Prisma for this particular feature that you just do migration generate it generate the whole SQL file migration apply or migration run it used to apply those changes in the database so I think they are on the same line and just like they are competitors right they are doing just uh, they are trying to be become best so that people can use them okay so this is a, just a version one and I just wanted to target only the migrations here this is how you can create your migrations and for the production it's always you can just make the synchronized false 
apply the migrations like this and now in the next video i will try to explain you what you need to migrate in your code when you are using type rm version 2 to version 3 that's important right because there are some breaking change also and there are there is a major change is in is in how we deal with the transactions and i will also talk about because this is also the same thing here what i'm doing is i am using typo rm but initializing the database connections is still the same for me what i'm doing is i'm just using this db module and just passing this whole uh, type rm 